Hello, this is the answer key for the 7.7 .7 to 7.10 quiz on AP Classroom. All right, so we have 12 multiple choice questions. So on this first one, um, we have one mole of carbon monoxide and you have one mole of hydrogen that's pumped into a rigid, previously evacuated two liter reaction vessel. So that means we don't have any of the CH3OH to begin with. So it's asking for what's going to happen at equilibrium. Well, since we only have reactant to begin with, the reaction is going to shift to the right to get to equilibrium. And we have a coefficient of 2 for the hydrogen compared to the coefficient of 1 for the carbon monoxide. So the hydrogen is going to get consumed faster. So once we get to equilibrium, we, since we're starting off with equal amounts of our two reactants and the hydrogen gets consumed faster, we're going to have a higher concentration of carbon monoxide compared to the hydrogen. So the answer has to be B. These other equalities down here, um, we can't determine that because we don't know the, the position of equilibrium. Um, or And then the, the, the K value is 14.5. So that means that your products are going to be slightly favored. So you would expect to have more of the CH3OH than your carbon monoxide. So that eliminates these down here. And then A is eliminated uh, because of the um, because of the, the difference in the coefficients. So it has to be letter B, all right? Next one, number two. Okay, so we have this uh, balanced equation up here. We know the Kp value. So we have uh, this gas is decomposing uh, a sample of each of the three gases that put into a previously evacuated container. The initial partial pressures of the gases are shown on the table below. So the question is, we want to figure out if the, the temperature is held constant. If the temperature is held constant, that means that this Kp value is still valid. Um, K, the K values are, are temperature dependent. So it's just saying that this is a good Kp value. So in which direction will the, the reaction proceed? So this is a, a Q versus K problem. So let me switch over here. So this is that same question, just uh, um, took a screenshot of part of it. So we want to take the, the balanced equation, write out the Q expression, which is just going to be our pressures of the, the products over the pressure of the reactant raised to the power of their coefficient. Now when I put in their initial amounts, and, and Q values are based on initial amounts, K values are based on equilibrium amounts, um, I end up, by putting these in, I end up getting 4,000, which is greater than the Kp value. So going back to the question here, if, if Q is greater than K, that means we have too many products. So the reverse reaction has to go faster. The reaction is going to shift to the left. So looking at our choices here, uh, it's going to be B. The reaction will form more reactant. So when Q is greater than K, you have too much product. The reaction has to shift to the left. Okay, question number three. All right, now with this one, we have two moles of each component in the reaction in a one liter container. So it's going to be two molar for each of these substances. Uh, we have our K value at 50, and we have to figure out what's going to happen as we move towards equilibrium. So this, again, is a Q versus K problem. So looking at the, the jam board here again. So um, this is our Q expression for the above reaction. Um, everything is 2 molar, so it just ends up being 2 squared over 2 squared, so that just gives us 1. So we know the K value is 50, so it, Q is going to be less than K. Uh, that means that the reaction is going to shift to the right as it moves towards equilibrium. So it's going to be B right here, more of the HI will form. Um, we can't say anything that the total pressure isn't going to change because we have two moles of gas on each side. So the pressure is going to stay the same. So it's going to shift to the right because Q is less than K. So it's going to be letter B. Okay, question number four. Um, now with this one, we're starting off with 0.1 moles of everything. Okay. So it's asking for which of the following species will have the highest concentration <clears throat> when the system reaches equilibrium. Now, with this, we want to look at the, the Kc value. So the Kc value is small. That means once we get to equilibrium, 
the reactants are going to be favored, as in we're going to have more reactant than product because of the small K value. So since we're starting off with equal amounts of everything, to get to equilibrium, it's going to have to shift to the left. And then as it shifts to the left, more of this H2S will be produced because of that coefficient two. So the, the highest concentration is going to be H2S because it's going to shift to the left and it has a higher coefficient. So letter A. All right, question five. Now we have a one liter container. Uh, it gives moles of each of these substances in the reaction. So we, we want to put, uh, it's based on concentration. So it would just be moles divided by one liter. So it ends up being the same molarity. And it's asking, uh, which of the following describes how the measured pressure in the reaction vessel will change and why it will change that way as the reaction system approaches equilibrium at constant temperatures. So again, we have initial amounts for everything. We have a K value to figure out which way it's going to shift. This is another Q equal Q versus K problem. So back over here, um, here's our reaction. Here's the Q expression based on that. The, this is the, the concentration of each substance. We end up with 1.7 after we uh, do that little calculation. That ends up being less than the K value. Okay? So when Q is less than K, that means we don't have enough product. So to get to equilibrium, it has to shift to the right. The forward reaction has to be faster. Now the question is also asking about uh, what's going to happen with the pressure. So we know the reaction is going to shift to the right because Q is less than K. All right, so that narrows it down to A and C. Okay. Now, for the as far as pressure will increase or pressure will decrease, that's a difference between A and C. On the product side, we have one mole of gas. On the reactant side, you have two moles of gas. So as the, the reaction shifts to the right, we're going to have less gas in this system. So that means we're going to have a lower pressure. So because it shifts to the right, um, our pressure is going to decrease. So that has to be letter C. <clears throat> All right, number six. All right, now we have this reaction up here at equilibrium. All right, now actually we can kind of skip over this little passage at the beginning and we don't have to worry about this whole diagram right here. All right, um, the key information is right here. It says <clears throat> we're adding Cl2 at equilibrium, okay? Now, when we add Cl2, that's going to cause the reaction to shift to the left. Uh, what that means is the reverse reaction is going to be faster until we get back into equilibrium. So we want to pick the graph that best depicts that. So what happens when we add the Cl2, the reverse reaction is going to go faster. So it's going to spike as soon as the Cl2 is added. As it proceeds, it's going to slow down and the forward reaction is going to speed up. But this is, we're just looking at the reverse reaction. So the reverse reaction is going to speed up and then it slows down until it levels off at a new equilibrium again. Um, now the difference between B and C is that the speed of the reverse reaction is faster than our initial equilibrium position. Um, so the, the correct answer is B, because when we add more chloride or chlorine, you're going to have more reacting particles. So the resulting equilibrium rate is going to be faster than our initial equilibrium rate. So it spikes, slows down, reaches a new equilibrium, but that new equilibrium rate is faster because now we just have more particles in the system. Okay, number seven. Okay, so we have this reaction up here. So which of the following changes would result in more NH3 in the mixture after equilibrium is reestablished? This is a Le Chatelier's principle problem. We want to figure out uh, what's going to cause the reaction to shift to the right and give us more of this NH3. So the only one that causes a, a right shift is D, adding some N2. When we add a component, it shifts away from it, so that causes a shift to the right. <clears throat> Question number eight. This one again, we're looking for which of the following changes this is another Le Chatelier problem. 
So we'll increase the amount of BaO2 in the vessel. So BaO2 is, is our reactant right here. So we want a left shift. Um, now with this one, the only one that causes a left shift is D lowering the temperature because this is endothermic. So heat energy is absorbed. So we treat heat energy as a reactant. So when you lower the temperature, you're removing heat energy. So when you remove a component, it shifts towards it. So that's gonna cause a shift left. So it's letter D. Question number nine. This is another Le Chatelier's principal problem. Uh, which of the following explains the observation that adding a few additional crystals of KSCN solid results in the red color of the solution becoming deeper? So this is saying when we add KSCN, it's making it more red. So that observation is telling us that it's causing a right shift because it's colorless on the reactant side, it's red on the, on the product side. So by getting a deeper red, we must be causing a right shift. Well, what happens when you put KSCN, because of the potassium, it's a soluble salt. So that's going to introduce more of these SCN ions into the solution. So by increasing this, it's going to cause a right shift. So the answer that corresponds with that, um, uh, letter C, adding KSCN dissolves, it dissolves because of the potassium. So it causes the reaction system to respond by producing more product to partially consume the SCN ions and reduce its concentration. So it's letter C. Question number 10. So it's kind of a two-step thing here. This is the reaction in question. And it's saying that um, in air, this N2O5 can react with water droplets to form HNO3. So the question is, which of the following predicts the effect that the formation of HNO3 will have on the equilibrium shown in reaction one? Well, this reaction consumes N2O5. So looking at this reaction, if we're consuming this, we're lowering that concentration. If you remove a component, it causes a shift towards that component. So that by removing N2O5, it's gonna cause a right shift in this reaction. Um, so, uh, it's going to be letter A, shift towards uh, the formation of more product because N2O5 is removed when it reacts to form HNO3. So letter A. Uh, question number 11. All right, now on this one, we have this KC expression. And the question is, we're diluting with distilled water to twice its original volume. And then, so which gives the following, which of the following gives a value of QC and predicts the response by the system immediately after dilution. So just showing that here, um, this is our K expression. Now, molarity, which is what goes into the, the K and Q expression, is moles over liters. Well, if we're doubling the volume, that means we're going to cut the molarity of each of these in half. So we have three concentrations on, half, uh, on the top, and we just have the one on the bottom. So it'd be like half times half times half over a half for each of these original molarities times its original KC. So when you do the math here, those two would cancel. So it's just one half times one half. So it ends up being one fourth of the original KC value equals our Q, all right? So it's, it's the original K value divided by four because we're doubling the volume of everything. Now, going back to our choices here, um, so that narrows it down to C and D. Well, if Q is less than K, that means that you don't have enough product, so we have to shift to the right. So it's going to be letter D. And then finally, question number 12. Um, so we have system at equilibrium. The initial pressures are given. Um, and this is another Q versus K problem. So when we plug the, these initial concentrations in, we get this one right here. Um, this is the, the correct um, equation for Q. And it ends up being 32, so it's greater than K, so it's going to cause a shift left, all right? All right, and that's all for the, the key. All right, have a good day.